Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Today I want to finally share my experience and findings on the SumUp payment terminals. So a while ago, or more precise, exactly one year ago, I looked into a few different models from them as they were popping up in our local grocery stores and were as cheap as like 20 euros for the base model and going up to I think 115 euro for the model with the printer and also a 3G module inside and a SIM card and I shared the teardowns of it on Twitter and it got quite some nice reactions as the overall build quality was very impressive and I also did not find anything in dev or hackable I would call it inside of them um, until the so-called sum up solo popped up it's this uh, all-in-one device which has a card reader for your payment, NFC for um, wireless payments, it has Wi-Fi, it has a built-in battery and you can also plug it into some kind of base station so inside of a store it looks quite neat and it also has a 3G uh, module inside and has a SIM card with active data and there was a time you could even get them for around 40 euros from Amazon with same day delivery. On them I shared as well the teardown, but quite quickly it showed that the building is overall of that solo device a bit different. And I want to take a closer look into it since the findings I had back then were not disclosed to not expose any yeah, exploits to the wild on an active running uh, device. Um, but by now SumUp has fixed these issues and I was in contact with them to just have a responsible disclosure of such issues. And there are three main topics I want to talk about which together leads to some yeah, nasty findings or hackabilities of the device. But by now I think if they are closed it's not really that much of an issue anymore. Even if one of these issues is a hardware fault that cannot be changed. So while it's a nice target to hack it's not really open to um, get a custom firmware running on them as everything is just running in RAM. Since they implemented a mechanism to erase the whole flash if the sign value of the whole application layer changes, even while you can change it while it's booted, any reboot will result in an empty flash. While there maybe is some exploit to also yeah, archive this. I did not look any closer now after this year and after the issues are fixed I will leave it to someone else. I'm done with the project and just want to share now my findings I had back then. Let's now take a look at the three issues I talked about. So for once we can open up the case quite easy via an X-Acto knife and no screwdriver. There are these clips all around, which are, yeah, open-able without any damage. But you need to be careful, of course. After that, you can lift up the backside where the battery is glued in and also the QI charging antenna or coil. So even wireless charging is possible. You then originally have these antennas here inside. Two of them, to be precise and this back plane, which is screwed in via some Torx screws and otherwise it's quite yeah, tightly packed. We got the yeah, wireless module, the, a few test pins all around and some battery which is most likely used to hold the secure 
keys and after removing this back plane we can see inside that they have some tamper resistance put onto it which will result in erasing all the necessary keys to do any transactions to be on the secure side but following the lead of these wires we can see them going to this these two test points and not only are they super close to the end of this backplane, this temper resistant backplane, they also house the UART console, which was found by probing around all the available test points and rebooting the device in between, which I want to talk about in a minute. So the very first and most flawed issue here is that by utilizing some acupuncture needles, you can stick them quite um, quite easily under the temper resistance and get them to access the UART console without triggering the temper detection. This allows you to dump all the secure keys if you got access as a root. So let's take a look at what this UART console is speaking to us. So by now connecting a USB to UART converter to these uh, UART connections on the PCB and opening up a terminal on basically any environment, we can see what it will tell us if we connect a USB-C connection just to boot it up. And we already see something happening. Not only are we allowed to enter U-Boot by hitting any button on boot and can basically already access the whole memory via U-Boot. We can also, just by restarting the whole system again, wait uh, what it tells us on boot and what the internals are. For once you can see the hashing itself here, but then also just a normal Linux booting as you would expect from some Wi-Fi routers or something like that. It is very speaky and if we just wait a few more seconds till it's boot up. We will be greeted by basically the direct root shell of everything. So it's not even like you need to log in or anything. It's just there. So if we type in who am I, we can again see that we are root. This is of course the second floor. I think I don't have to say it. This did allow me to dump the whole memory and also to reverse engineer how the basic things work. So for example there is this um, solo dev tool we can utilize to enable the USB connection um, on the USB-C plug and I want to enable the G serial mode. This will now allow me to use the USB-C connection to transfer data. It will also end up in a root shell but is not enabled on boot. That way I was able to transfer data fast back and forth but I only utilized UART by now by just base 32 all the uh, data I want to transmit, send it over UART and decode it again to the normal data. And of course we need to run the obligatory DOOM. It was quite an adventure to get it compiled to put the um, image onto the frame buffer 
and also to get around how to disable the main app it is called to allow writing to the frame buffer itself. There is one partition on the device which can store user data and normally it is used to store the settings and this um, partition is also not checked for any hash values on boot so I was able to copy Doom to it to not need to copy it every time so like so we have for once the game and the executable but we still need to copy it into the temp folder as otherwise it is not allowed to run from that position that needs to go away like so we can start doom and it will detect the frame buffer itself many thanks to the github repository i will link it down in the description running doom was of course just a basic challenge for me personally to understand how to compile for a different system and also how to write to the frame buffer itself. I never finished to implement any inputs. And overall the third flaw I found was this main sum up solo application that is running after the device boots. This application is by no means checked for any uh, sign or hashing value it will just run like a normal application and I was able to change its behavior to my own wantings by byte patching some values in it so for example that the screen does not show the temper detection anymore but that it will just run normally like an application. This temper detection is now shown because I unscrewed the back cover, but if you would just do it via the acupuncture needle trick, you could extract the keys, put everything back together, change the application to your own wantings, and have it display like just 10 euros but in reality something like 200 euros will be charged from the user's card this of course implements or requires a lot of bad behaviors to get there that's it for the journey of me poking around this sum up solo it is also worth to mention that my intentions were never to get any hacking into the payment direction working so like exploiting any payments, changing any money values or so. My main goal was really just to look into how the system works and also how uh, the device itself could be reused as a smart home display or whatever, like I usually do in my projects and not the security device. Uh, that we will end up finding such things is of course a different story. And also another thing is that the whole payments itself do work on the sum up API which can be used the same way via an Android application. So we don't even have something in depth or unknown if we reverse engineer the API calls from the application. It's really just another type of communication to the server as the Android application would do and that is public uh, to anyone on GitHub. As a conclusion, we have these three major flaws. For once, the way to close UART lines on the temper detection. We have this root shell open directly and the possibility to run the main application with changes to your needs is now maybe brought to you in a not so enthusiastic way but since it's already one year ago it's just I maybe forgot half of the things I discovered and it's just hard to get into it again just to mention it. The um, communication with Summer was very nice, 
they contacted me after I published the Doom video. I am of course well aware of not disclosing anything in depth at that point. And I also mentioned it that way to them and disclosed the issues I found. And we had a bit of conversation about other topics as well. They offered to send me a few devices to check in on, which I declined at that point. And also I did now contacted them again now last week to just say that I want to make the issues public now and they agreed to uh, want to review this video beforehand uh, which I will most likely do but let's see what they say. Yeah I hope you still found this interesting. It's just nice to see that even the big players uh, do make mistakes and have a great day. See you next time.